Hello ladies and gentlemen, day one, week two, LEC Spring 2024, an eventful day, a day filled with action, a day with filled with uh, pain. Um, we're here to break it down, and break it down we shall. SK versus BDS, SK have had two of the worst beats in the league. Sorry, Cookie scared me. I saw a shadow walking and it was my thick cat. All right, SK versus BDS. They had a very, very tough beat. Ashpan, Smolder, Oriana, Rel, Varus, Kalista to match. And Nico gets first picked. Karma, Aphelios gets locked in. Surprising, right? Senna is open. But it seems like both of these teams don't want to play Senna. I prefer Zeri over Aphelios, but I do prefer Senna over both. But when you lock in Karma... Most of the time you want to go like Kamas and Zhao. I'm not so sure why they picked Aphelios or felt the need to pick Aphelios. I'm guessing, well, they showed it. It's not really a guess. They just wanted to play Jackson to Zen Zhao, uh, which is okay. Like, Kama Jax is not uh, a bad pairing. Um, but, um, yeah, that's entirely fine. Um, you know, there's mixed opinions on what the matchup is, but we see a lot of junglers do, do well with Jax, right? As Zerg is logged in, Zen Zhao, you go for five, they get to pick Thresh on four, which is surprising. Uh, like, uh, sure, Thresh and Aphelios is a legendary pairing, but usually you just pick Nautilus anyway. Maybe they didn't want to invite Braum, but I don't think their champions are weak against Braum. I don't think their champs care too much about Renata either. Maybe Renata's like, okay, but uh, Thresh, a lover of special, I guess. And Nautilus and Jace gets picked on four, five. Uh, Jace, you know, when we think of who Adam is, blind picking the range champions, Jace Rumble is uh, the best recipe for success. Even though Adam is very good at playing these matchups and very good at getting the most out of his champions, these matchups are inher inherently difficult and it's something to pay attention to as we go on with BDS. And even on red side, teams are allowed to just blind pick Jace. Like here, you could also go the route of picking a tank. A tank is very good against Nico, very solid against Jace. Here, Malphite Kessanta is out, so it's a very specific case. Maybe you would have to play Orn, and I think Orn would do, do work here uh, with the Jax jungle and the Kama Felio Stretch bottom side, but uh, to each their own, right? I just wanted to highlight this and also highlight the previous week's game where BDS played against, of course, Vitality, where Jace was blind picked, and then Twisted Fate LB was banned, and then Rumble. Uh, was picked here on five. Twisted Fate, another ranged champion. Darius out, Renekton out, and then Rumble was picked and Olaf was answer again. This is something that um, BDS need to be very careful about. All in all, I do think that uh, Blue Side has uh, the better comp, in my opinion. Uh, let's take a look at the game, because this game was very, very messy in many, many ways. This game started off with Isma really 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 uh really really running it down uh we have jacks three camping into bottom side uh let me just check what isma was 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 doing because isma is uh, playing to not get invaded by jacks so he's uh, uh, doing just a quick clear to be top as fast as possible and um irrelevant does a good job here of together with phase rush is running away and dodging that axe that would slow him and then the axe misses again, irrelevant, good movement here. She wasted some time, but uh, didn't lose too much because Isma also moved to the situation, right, and dropped his camp, so it allows Jax to then contest. Irrelevant now scared for his life, even though as a ward on Pixel asks his jungler to come. Uh, she has two options, is to regang top, or he has the option of going to blue. Isma goes to top side, all fine and dandy, and then, the, of course, the, the buff gets stolen. Here, not sure... Like here, I think that uh, Isma could just wait. He could just wait for his spells a little bit longer. Uh, I think that he won the situation, could push out Jax. He, he already like took HP off of Shio. He won, like the situation was all fine and dandy. And then Isma here with the flash. I think that if he just spaced it a little bit longer, held the spells a little bit longer, I think that uh, the situation could have been fine, but instead it turns into an absolute disaster with Niski also dying, of course. And the root landing now uh bds being 2-0 up the follow-up here from isma he goes into top side not sure what this start here is like considering top conditions and uh, how strong Jax is 
I feel like starting this is giga optimistic. Keep in mind, Karma's 2 0. Shield is stronger as well because of the counter matchup, and Isma has no flash in top conditions, is very volatile. Uh, this is just uh, really, really bad for the game. Really, really bad. And Niski puts on his super pants. Niski really doesn't want to drop this game, he wants to win this game. Uh, let's take a look at some of the moves. Uh, here I was surprised that uh, SK actually win this. I think that uh, Shio committing on Niski here was uh, just a mistake. He should have fought with his teammates on Isma and forced his flash and would have been better. Then they would fight in closer proximity to Aphelios. So this was uh, the first initial gold swing. Let's take a look now at Niski's flash here at the coming uh, Drake situation. Here it is. Niski Baba is TPing. He spotted good more fight. I mean, not lose ult. Uh, and then they push it forward. Niski here with the W, Prota Belt, hits everybody, good swing, extra kick, gets a triple kill, double kill, sorry, and he's fed as fuck, baby. SK come back into the game, Niski is not fucking losing this one. Uh, here, in this moment, they're just trading Herald for the bot push, which is fine. And uh, Niski continues to do very, very nasty plays on the mid wave. I think that BDS need to really start counting minions because the amount of times that they die on the mid wave is a bit too much. So SK looks like in dominant position, looks like about to win the game, carry the game, all, all is good. Uh, the plays around mid lane continue. The turn is not too bad. Well, let me just show you guys how Ice died before we continue with that. Like Ice just kind of walks up dry. I don't know if he's playing because forward because he has Lantern, but Lavrov is out of position. The Lantern is not coming. Like Lavrov is lanterning late and he gets caught and he dies, which means that uh, SK is just pressuring Nash. So SK, of course, they have a very free game ahead of themselves. Nash is on. All is good. Not sure what the fuck this play is. Like Nesky is pushing a very deep wave and BDS uh, look to punish. I think this wave top doesn't matter too much. And the fact that SK are like kind of uh, being extended in this fight is not so good. But they get Adam in the end. No biggie. Uh, Shio gets a Drake meanwhile. This as well, I don't like how SK is fighting, like this is so deep, there's no wave, he tries to cancel the Lantern with his R. And this only works here because Zeri is so strong and she goes over the wall, but this is, this is very premeditated, meditated, you know, because this is not something that you think about. It's like, oh, I'm gonna die here because Zeri is gonna triple kill them. Like, that's not really what you think about when this, you're making this play. Uh, this is just unnecessary because you're playing for the next top wave for the tier 2. Zinzal doesn't need to uh, be there, you can just wait for the wave and then collapse together with the Zeri. Very, very off sync. Uh, which is something that happens later on too. So Ice gets caught again by Niski. So we have this situation. Speaking of unlike four situations. So pay attention here. So Zeri wants to kill Raptor Respawn. He wants to kill Raptor Respawn. And uh, Olaf is marking this wave. Olaf is a very strong champion into the likes of Xin Zhao. Xin Zhao wins, loses in the close engagement. Uh, Xin Zhao is a kind of half bruiser, right? He's very good against ranged champions because of his ultimate, can engage. But against champions like the Gore, classic Gordrika champions, Xin Zhao is weak. So Olaf is in that category, right? So we continue here. And keep in mind here, look, Zeri is just waiting for Raptor to respawn. Completely desynced here. Maybe if Zeri was on the same page, maybe they could look for something. But playing on this... I, like, um, it's kind of strange. In my mind here, you just play for Nash, you have super minions going bot, all is good. You're not going to play for this tower right now, I don't think it makes sense. And uh, they force this fight. Zeri comes in very late, Jace is cut off because he has to take a very strange pathing. Whole of SK is just so disjointed in this decision. It's just a very bad spot to fight in. The continuation of this sequence needs to be that you're going towards Nash. So this was, of course, very, very bad. I want to find the moment where Niski flashes, because here Niski flashes, tries to kill Ice in a world where he kills him, maybe they can go for end, but obviously burning flash like this and making that mistake is very bad for the game. Uh, and now all of a sudden BDS, they denied Soul, they got the Nash and all of a sudden Aphelios is reaching critical mass, which is of course four items and beyond. Here I think BT should be bought for Zeri, would have been better. Uh, we continue forward. Here Absolutely incredible that by this minion is the biggest fraud minion. I don't know how this how this minion can even uh, you know be interpreted as real. Like the way it walks, you know, the way this minion walks is so goofy. You know, 
Like it has, uh, it's, it's crazy that this even works, you know, in the first place. Extra kick in this moment. It's just hitting, hitting, hitting. And then, and in this moment, you kind of ask yourself, how on earth did SK actually lose this game? They get uh, soul point, just like the enemy team. Here, I couldn't really judge why BDS was uh, so much faster uh, onto the Drake. I'm not sure. I can't really judge. Uh, SK is just on the mid wave, and uh, there's nothing. There's just nothing here. I don't know if they could make a play where they like threaten end or something like this, but with Nash recall and with white. Uh, guns here, it, it's kind of done too fast. I think just with uh, without the flash on on the on the key engages, it's very hard to break into BDS. I just don't, I can't really tell why they don't have, why they lose position so hard. I don't know if it took took them too long to do Drake and the enemy could respawn and go first. I'm not so sure because in that case the Drake is a little bit irrelevant. Isma tries to steal, doesn't get it. One case might, and then there's no fight. Here in my mind, every time SK shouldn't want to pursue here. There's no reason to pursue here. You don't have flash on Niski because of what happened before. You don't have key flashes. You want to just push the waves and stall the enemy Nash. Because if the enemy backs off into this space and you push this wave and maybe catch, uh, take the deep wave there, in this moment, BDS are going to lose a solid minute and a half under Nash if you decide to do so. Uh, if chasing into this area is just plain and simple, very bad. Like somehow this fight started decently. Uh, Labrov gets left behind because he gets slowed and uh, Labrov is just hitting a ward like I think Labrov could have just ran in a straight line and all would be fine and then he's hooking and he gets caught uh, just as a principle I didn't really like that they were looking for this engage right so extra kick has ult on he's hitting he's hitting he's hitting here crucial detail extra kick has QSS and he uses it too soon he gets stunned he Q assesses and buffers it with Jack Soup and confuses that for E. So he's stuck in a stun here. Dos finds a nice hook. Imagine a world where he maybe he cleanses that stun. He kites earlier, hits earlier, because keep in mind exit kick is fucking strong. There's a six item Zeri. I know we don't like Zeri on this channel, but this is a monster at Zeri. And then it's done. It's plain and simple done. And SK lose another one game. Game number two, GX versus Fnatic. Very straightforward here. Uh, GX, uh, first pick Talia, Rel Ari, I think Ari is really, really strong. I think the Talia prior should probably go down. I think here, uh, probably Nautilus is the better champion to pick, but it seems like June is very happy to play uh, the Rel. Fine for me, Rel into Nautilus, cool. Here, Varus is open, so they're inviting the enemy to pick Varus or Senna. So if the enemy picks Senna, they go, they go, they go Varus on three. If the enemy goes Varus, they go Zeri. Uh, and Fnatic seems to be happy in that trade. Fnatic ban Kisante Rumble. Go to target ban the champions who down the place the most. And then TF Leeson. And then Viego gets picked on 4. When you pick Viego on 4 here, you're heavily signaling that you want to pick a tank on 5. Very similar to the Rogue Draft, right? The Rogue Draft is the same. Uh, here, basically, they picked Viego on 4 with Rel, uh, with, with Nautilus support. And then they just uh, went uh, Malphite on 5 into the Urgot. Uh, you don't see it. Uh, it will be shown when I refresh. And nevertheless, so, Talia first pick, Rel Ari, we talked about the Zeri, Kalista, Oriana, Volibear, Wei, Vi, out, okay. Viego gets picked. Well, in some cases, people like to pick Zin Zhao here. Viego is good if you can force a tank on five, right? Here, if your top laner is ready to play Udir, Orn, whatever, it's fine. You just don't want to end up on like Viego Nar. Like Viego is a champion that does well in compositions that are already complete. And the thing is, this Rel Ari Zeri is not a composition that is complete. Viego is strong early because he clears fast, uh, but uh, he offers very little to the composition. It needs to be complete without him. So Renekton, Mauka gets banned and Orn is just the perfect pick, right? They need a champion that can tank the Nautilus hook and, uh, and, 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 and also tank the Mauka ult. They need a tank and Orn does very well into Renekton, right? Very well by the standard of a tank. He's very happy to be in such a matchup. Uh, in the game, I need to remind myself a little bit of what happened. I think it was playing as simple as Stomp. Uh, I think early on was a little bit on the rougher end, and GX had uh, a fine early game. Uh, but uh, both me and Dom just predicted the same, that uh, eventually, uh, you know, eventually we'll have a situation where Fnatic just kind of outscale because their decisions will just be uh, more precise. Uh, let's fast forward. Uh, this fight... 
I think that um, the focus could have been better on to Peach. I think if everyone was aware of what uh, Viego wants to achieve here, I think it's better. Noah could fight together with Razork, his brother. Humanoid could find ways to commit onto Peach too. Like, full focus should be on getting Viego a reset, right? If Viego gets the Maokai, everything kind of flows fluidly and it would have been a lot better. But here they are splitting damage a lot. Noah is through rocks and uh, Peach actually manages to get away and uh, they lose the fight, but at least they get the dragon, right? So 2 0 up for blue side, they get the Drake. This one here, uh, like, I know that Oscar has Oscar in his name, uh, but uh, this level of acting, uh, Odo Amne should not believe it, you know? It's like, if uh, the fucking Orn presses Q like that, W's you like this, and then fucking E's you like this, like, if an Orn plays the matchup like that, man, like, your alarm bells need to go off. Like, he just uses his whole mana pool for absolutely nothing. Like, you need to know right away that Razork is here or this guy is just a psychopath and it is what it is you know because like like here the fact that Odama plays it like this and then dashes forward and then gets killed on this dashes in a way that uh Orn still tags him with the ult uh, this is terrible right it's like Orn's gonna be ahead of the rest of the game like this is this is not acceptable for topside and we continue in this moment as well, Ari is already hovering, they're diving between turrets, good W here from Rel. Like here, you already see the situation where GX is just going to get uh, Quadra killed here. I think if Razor plays a little bit slower because he went for the Noon Quiver and Recurve Bow build, I think it would have been a lot better. Uh, because here he just needs to stay alive until the Cavalry is here to, to get him those resets. But Noah plays the situation pretty well, let me just play it out, let you guys see, for those who didn't see it. Noah kind of pops. Little Zeri action, the bounces, you know, the AoE damage of Zeri, it's kind of juicy, and then boom, the, the the triple, and then of course with the triple on Zeri, she gets static shift, she's rich as fuck. Those who don't know, you wonder, why Yamaro is everybody buying static shift? Let me just show you here, a uh, low wiki. So basically, AD carry is heavily gated by the fact that um, crit items are quite expensive and you need to fill your, your slots uh, because they scale very hard off of each other, right? Uh, crit scales well with crit, uh, naturally, right? The more you have, the better it is. All that good stuff. Uh, here, if you look at the cost here, 2,700. So it's noon, let's say you have Noon Quiver on first base. You only need 1,400 to complete the item. It's very cheap. Uh, Compare it to his brother, Storm Razor, 3,100. You think about Kraken, 3,000. This is 300 gold difference. It's not like, it's not like the, the, the bounce is bad, right? It's not bad at all. It just gives you additional damage. All good and, and, and fine. Uh, you trade basically... You, you just spend so little gold. If you just look at the cost analysis here, 122% gold efficient, which is massive, compared to maybe Storm Razor. Um, obviously, you have to evaluate the, the buffs a little bit different. You compare it to Storm Razor. Sorry. Compared to Storm Razor, and it's 105% gold efficient. That's why every AD motherfucker is buying static shit, yeah? So, let's take a look at the rest of the game. Reggaeton died again. He's just out of the game. He's fucking buying Stridebreaker against Orn 2. Doesn't seem to be the play for me, in my opinion. The rest of the game was kind of easy for Fnatic, straightforward and simple. They had some throws left and right, but it didn't really matter. Like, there was very, very minor things that... Uh, uh, you could really complain about Humanoid in the zoo spot, June finds the engage, the Orn follow up, and uh, Humanoid on the flank. Uh, they're just outvaluing the enemy at this point, easy peasy. We continue. Let's we'll see if there's any other highlight to show in this game. I right, this was a minor oopsie, but it's not that big of a deal. Like this could have been maybe dangerous, but it's, it's really, really small, you know? Things like you don't need to fight on the mid wave ever. You can just uh, push a neutral and play an enemy jungle, you know, be first because the enemy is showing. And uh, GG, GG, GG. Fnatic looking good. Fnatic looking good. All right. G2 vs. Team Heretics. G2 vs. Team Heretics. Um, G2 playing quite sloppy in the early game, but showing once again. Uh, showing once again 
uh, that uh, macro wise they're just better than everybody so uh, draft wise I guess we could talk about that first draft wise they challenge the Draven they challenge the Draven myth so with Zeri, Kaiser, Kalista out and Smolder out they started to first be Draven this is something that we saw also Elioia, Elioia having high prior on Draven later more on that later but Team Retix answered Java first pick by picking Varos Oriana. Yeah. Obviously, here, you want to pick Ari. Let's see, you go Ari Leeson. And all of a sudden, Javan hates his life. You can pick Varus on three, and at least you know he doesn't get turbo value. You know you 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 can play a little bit with the game. You know, Javan Prior seems to be high in Europe. Two teams picked it, and sure, if you're afraid that enemy gets Varus because they first pick Javan, then take the Varus, have it be weak against Javan, but take the Ari at least. You know. There needs to be some some give here. Uh, but they go Varus Oriana and then Draven Ari gets locked in and then Rel on three. Um, follow up is Kragas Jax, Brown Ban, Nautilus picked on four, and Renata Glask. Then Renatin gets blinded and Wunder blind picks Aatrox. I usually don't like Aatrox into, into Renekton, but I think in such a game it's fine because you know that Javan is going bot. Like Javans has to go mid and go bot if he comes top to pressure you. Like, you know, the amount of pressure you relieve from bot is just too big. So I think when Atrox can play in isolation against Renekton, it's fine. But if you're pressured by ganks and can get Dove, uh, yeah, then it's impossible for Atrox to play. So I understand why he wanted to play Atrox and not Nar in this game because Nar, playing Nar against this team, uh, yeah, is kind of awkward. So let's take a look at some of these G2 mistakes. So first and foremost, they got bored. So. This is, uh, let's just watch it from the replay perspective. Uh, G2 uh, pull off a Billy Billy or a T1. Billy Billy and T1 have done similar shit, but they get bored. Uh, they're looking to do a, just a clean dive and it's just fucking, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, if Hansama has the balls to just fucking commit, I think they win. Because imagine here, if he cleanses and flashes after Flakit, I think that uh, they can win. Like, they could just commit all the way, rock and roll. The biggest atrocity of this is that they know Rel is coming into bottom side because there was just a tussle around mid. They know Rel position. They know Rel is coming into bottom side. Uh, so, in this moment, I think that if they commit and they commit all the way, 2v2 wise, I think they can win. But then they abandon and they peace out and they give a double kill to Yankos. Yankos probably the worst person to have the gold, but of course, this changes the bot matchup because you lose stacks and, uh, and so forth. Uh, Zyro gets uh, cleanly killed, at least he keeps flash. Let's just take a look at the gank, let me let me show it. Caps is posturing towards bottom side, and he's baiting Zyro to look for a trade on him as he's posturing into bottom side, and then he finds the clean charm and Zyro doesn't flash. Uh, I think here in this spot, even if he flashes, uh, Yai can just uh, EQ after him always. Here only Yai only EQs because he did indeed get charms with the CC chain. Otherwise, he would just keep it for the flash and he would die anyway. So I'm happy as Zoro as Zoro kept flash there. We continue. A key detail as well is just uh, G2 does a good job of actually pressuring the vision around mid, which makes uh, Zoro's laning a lot more awkward. He also lost flash. Uh, against the Javan, obviously, that's really, really painful. Ansama with the movement, Bobby Schmur that time. Uh, here we go. Yak in the mid lane, uh, tries to EQ out of Oriana ult. It's a common interaction, you have to flash. You don't get out of the EQ unless you do it very early and preemptively. Caps doesn't land the charm, and then the turnaround here with the CC, he just needs to, like, do something, you know, he needs to flash or um, EQ a shorter distance for it to work, you know, because you get pulled. The new Q is out of flag range, but it's a very habit thing for Javan to E max range. There was a bit of a throw here from G2, a little bit of sloppiness uh, that uh, they got punished for. BB somehow survives. I don't think this should be possible. I don't know how the fuck he survived. Uh, this is. Uh, I'm gonna rewatch it now. I think they were just surprised when BB uh, empowered Q on three people to heal so much. I think this, this just surprised them. Alright. 
This is where disaster begins. I don't know what Flacket is doing. He's collecting mushrooms in the jungle. Uh, I really like this play from Mickey though. He cancels his base and kind of lurks after him here. Uh, take a look at this move. Because he spots him and, and pings him and says, Yo, I found fish. Pulls him into the explosive. And then hits the plant. Very hard for Flacket to expect this. You know, he just wants to connect because he knows he's going to get dove on both. And, and Mickey and, and, and Yike just... Uh, gather so much information i always repeat this uh, i probably will do like a video breakdown of g2's macro but the way yike and mickey have become in terms of how much information they gain on the map and how their solar laners use that to push is really really impressive like they're always always pushing side creating imbalances and uh, farming really really well and are very sharp on how to defend mid turret with three people and they always get vision around mid lane, which I think is uh, very impressive. I'm not sure here what will happen to Trimby's hook. I thought that, uh, like, his hook is so weird, so I thought maybe the fucking ult from Renata is redirecting it. Nah. Nah, okay. It's just that uh, the airborne Mickey just looks weird to him, so he just misses. I don't think that <laughs> Renata will redirect it. <laughs> okay. We continue. So already the condition of caps are kind of mental, he has two items, he got a lot of gold, the gold advantage is all in caps' pocket, CS wise, turret baiting wise, Renekton the same, they have uh, shutdowns of course, we continue, Renekton with the flank, look at Yag's gameplay here, this is some supreme Javan gameplay, flash into EQ out, into uh, with the perfect timing of the reggaeton, this is very very clean here from Yag, good posturing, good movement, I think though the team Retics, like someone needs to fucking use the spells on him, you know, if I can Nautilus hook something, I like, press your fucking buttons on him because he needs to go into this bush to get vision, you know, he doesn't have awards. So I think that uh, the front line here of team Retics need to just fucking turn earlier, you know, they need to fucking pull the trigger. Um, but the HOC TP is on mid and uh, team Retics is too timid to, to fight when they control the space. I think they should have just fucking full centered. But no Varos will makes it hard. And that's the ace. All right, that's about it. That's about it. G2, still the best team in the league. Nothing surprising there. Yeah, this turn was quite poor. I think they needed to either have people, you know, playing in these bushes to poke them. Like, let's say Ari's in this bush, pokes the first enemy that enters, kites back, they play on Dick Bush. And they maybe look to turn here because they have champions they can get over the wall with Draven Ult, right? Um, I think they could have just played this natural situation better. I think just the turn through the ramp before the enemy has entered is just a really bad one. And uh, Team Retis get kind of free entry into this spot. But in the end, even in such a bad fight, G2 uh, clear and they win. All right. Mad Lions vs Vitality, Mad Lions vs Vitality, let's take a look at the game, Vitality back to winning, 3-1 scoreline, they beat Mad Lions this time around, and Vitality, I think Vitality, Kazi, is really fucking solid, this was probably the best game we've seen from Douglas in his entire LEC career, kind of a pop of uh, Jack's game, uh, Nautilus, he lay back to Nautilus, and uh, Ari Wukong for 5, here I'm very surprised that uh, Blue Side did not ban Ari, uh, but uh, they choose to ban more fight for the Jace, okay, you're blind picking Jace, uh, because, um, yeah, that's a solid blind, especially when enemy is showing Jax. I was surprised that uh, Ari doesn't get picked here on 3, because Jax, very little incentive here for Jax, right? Another thing here is, I think this Javan is so out of place. Why the fuck would you want to play Javan in this game? There's only really Senna, playing against Jax and Ari sounds really miserable. You're kind of hoping that Senna has flashed down and that's all you can really do. I'm uh, sure you have some potential in the early game with Javan to do some cheesy plays, but I really don't like it. Like, um, I think that both G2 and Mad could have been punished for this Javan. I don't think the buff is strong enough to justify it. If we look at Javan's, like, increase in win ratio uh, over, uh, over the patch change, I think that it's uh, super uninteresting. He did get two seconds cool cooldown down on Q Max, right? But uh, I just don't think this is exciting enough to 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 justify it. If you look back at like previous patches, you know when Javan was really really a demon, 
uh, like when he was really really peaking uh, we don't even have those patches I wanted to go back to, to the world's patch but uh, we couldn't find it um, he just it was a little bit of a different champ and he had access to gold drinker and better items but now his favorite items have been just uh, a little bit nerfed even and I think just Zinza is, is, is better and, and, and better all around maybe like if the enemy has Varos Oriana you can get away with it but okay we continue so so they pick Javan Ari gets picked on four I think trying to find room to ban this would have been important but it is what it is they ban Graga Sakali to set up Jax blind right uh, so there's that but then the moment Jace and Javan come in Jax goes jungle they pivot and they go Wukong top Wukong was a classic counter to Jace this is something that was played a lot in the past you have two engages you get a lot of natural armor it's pretty decent in such a game it's good against Javan, good against Jace, good against Varos too. Uh, this is a solid Wukong game uh, for those who are interested. I, don't, I like it a lot more here than against the TF that wounded it. And looking at this game, Mad Lions did indeed have a very, very strong early game. Uh, I can't really find the vote just yet. Uh, this should be it. All right. So early game, very solid, Frescawi, solo killed, Ari, like it was looking good, they had good conditions, they were ahead on bottom side, uh, everything was looking fine and dandy, they were Mad Lions classic early game, it looked like uh, they are going to run away with the game, uh, but the truth of the compositions uh, is something that always gets shown when you make mistakes, so... Uh, it started off with this play here, uh, where uh, Javan and Jace tried to go very deep on top side, uh, any type of kills that Vitality gets, and you know, a big thing that Kazi does so well, his soul collection is like fucking reckless level. 87 at this point in the game, uh, sorry, 71, I fucking looked at that wrong. 70 is, is like okay-ish, it's okay, like this is a good number, I thought he had fucking 80 at uh, at minute 16, so I was gig impressed, but I just looked at it wrong, sorry. Um, this is one, uh, I'm trying to find the next moment here where they end on top side, let me find it, let me find it, blue side is just trying to snowball. First kill on Midwin, this is big of course. And also Midwin flashes. They go very deep into the top side. I'm trying really, really hard to find this moment because uh, I guess this is the one. So, uh, here Vitality in their setup. Uh, they're trying to uh, delay the progression of the game by isolating the side lane. Right now, Oriana and Jace, the Jace with no flash, are very killable. Hilly is playing with TP, Hilly is playing TP, you have Photon TP, so they're doing this split here where they're going to bottom side looking to dive whoever's coming and red side is hoping that they can defend Nash. Here with attack speed Varus and Oriana, I think they could have started to threaten it, but the vision, the way it's placed here from Senna allows them a lot of breathing room. Senna also base for tempo, but the fact that MDK don't find a way to sweep these wards does make the game a lot easier for Vitality. Because here, if they sweep these wards and go into Fog, they will threaten these two to show and to TP, right? Uh, we continue. Betio gets kind of low-key caught. You know, he's, he feels safe because he's seeing the people look into this ward and he's going to look to poke them as they enter here. But the Lioi has already crossed and he took a different route. Uh, so here he is. And then he gets caught and somehow he survives. Somehow he survives. This is obviously very fucking lucky. It was very close. Lioi has to flash out. And now this extension here. Uh, Wukong has a very deep ward. The fact that MDK didn't sweep these wards is the biggest pain point here, right? There's the ward, there's the ward, there's the ward. Full information for the team that is on the back foot. And these ward placements are very crucial. You know, you have a blue ward, blue trinket there. You have maybe sweepers coming up, maybe too many blue trinkets on blue side. And then you have the pink wards. You need to clear this vision because you cannot get flanked with your composition and invite, uh, you know, this aggressive play on bottom side without the enemy feeling fear of the Nash being started. Uh, and higher, there was a big punish, Douglas got out, Sundered Sky Value was fucking crazy, popping, and now Red Side's composition is looking very menacing here. Very menacing. Not sure what fuck Hilly is doing here. Hilly had a bit of a goofball of a game, I'm not gonna lie. I love Hilly, but uh, this is a moment where him hitting this is just silly. They need to play with the wave, make the enemy show. MDK like to make tempo traps like this. Uh, in this moment, Kazi has 117. And uh, I like this movement here from Photon because he finds the angle. Look at Photon here, he's sweeping the entire way and he's going to pop another sweeper if I remember correctly. Sweeping, sweeping, sweeping. Uh, and he crosses into space where he sees 
that the enemy has no vision. And then he crosses and the enemy doesn't spot him. Now the blue trinket shows and he goes over the wall to match his engage with, with the opposition. Uh, they managed to get the Nasher, but at what cost? You know, it's just very hard for Lusa to actually deal with Jax, Wukong and Ari. Like these champions are so vulnerable and blue side have a Jarvan that contributes nothing. Jacer is very fragile and Oriana is the only thing really that can do anything. Skawi had a pretty decent game, but his power was not enough. And we continue. Let's look at the climax of the game. The big fight. Kazi now 160 souls. Hilly just decided he has fucking enough. I'm gonna engage. I'm gonna fucking go. Why is Eluia looking at me? I'm gonna fuck him up. Douglas looks to get the engage. They push the enemy out. Yet in this moment, this could have been fucking dangerous if you look at it right. Uh, just Photon finding this angle here is very juicy. Photon, uh, he presses W and uh, finds a fat engage. He finds it on the whole back line here. Everybody is CC'd and he kind of saves the game there because Viteo, nice to watch, survives and they commit. And um, that is all she wrote. There was one more final fight, but Kazi has just reached. A different fucking galaxy altogether with 180 souls. 180! Yeah, for those who uh, watch that. Uh, and then. That is it. Let's find this fucking final fight. Where are you? Here we go. Look at the range Kazi's shooting from, man. Like, how is that fair, man? These fucking full items, rapid fire, fucking love tap. Photon spotted on vision. And, uh,. Bedouin is trying to threaten. Hilly just presses fucking R on Frescawi. And uh, this is probably like the best fight that you can hope for, right? Best fight that you can hope for. Oriana old, Sona, like Senna gets fucking one shot. But uh, they don't have they don't have the juice and the composition, you know, they just don't have the power uh, to, to to deal with uh, the scaling here of vitality. 7777, seven. lucky number seven. I love seven. Um up there. If uh, you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, Vitality, looking juicy. I like the form of Photon. Photon is back. Get your Photon stocks while you can. Photon is back. I'm liking what I see from Photon. Uh, Photon is looking fantastic. Kazi as well. Photon and Kazi looking really solid. Ari being back in the meta. Viteo can do his Chovy impression. And Douglas having the best game so far on Jax. Covers up for the fact that Hilly had a bit of a stinker here. Uh, but um, Hilly can always find form. We believe in Hilly on this channel. Uh, let's continue to the final game. The most painful game for me personally. Oof. Oof, 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 my friends. Oof. Alright, let's refresh this so we have the draft. Oof. Oof. Casey versus Rogue. Draven ban, Talia ban, Aatrox ban, screams Kalista first pick. Rogue follow up with Smolder, Oriana, Huey banning all the mages. Here Ari is the best champion in the room, but also Niku is uh, a good answer into it. I didn't think about it while champion select was live. I think a big problem here with picking Kalista, Niko and Rel is the fact that Rel... Uh, like if you pick Rel here, you're going to go bot with it 99% of the cases. Because you don't want to put a Rel Niko on your team. I think that what you can consider here, plain and simple, is just to pick your AD jungle here and leave your support for later if you want to have options. Imagine here you go Kalista and then you go like Nico Zinzao, Nico Leeson, that's perfectly fine too. You have a very strong 2v2 because Rel screams that you go bot. But nevertheless, Rel is fine into Nautilus, Rel is fine into Tamkench, it's not that big of a deal, right? So Senna gets picked together with Ari and then they pick Nautilus on 3 uh, and then Kalista. Uh, is fine in that matchup, she's a prior. They ban Renata Glass. I think Renata is a wasted ban because if enemy goes Renata support with Nico Rel, I think that they are just losing, but uh, uh, maybe you just want to protect the matchup, so it's perfectly fine. Leeson gets banned, Udir, and Vi. Here, I didn't like the approach of going Viego because Viego sells out your bot. It's like here you need to pick the strongest jungler available, which is Volibear, to make sure that your 3v3 bottom side is stronger. Viego also invites, of course, the Zinzao lock-in, and with the Zinzao lock-in, uh, you know, he, they will still be stronger 3v3 and 2v2 mid, but they will have a champion that scales better than Volibear. So, I think Viego here is, is very selfish, and I think Viego here is very dangerous. I think they got away with it because Casey played 
uh, quite atrociously in, in, in this one, uh, to be perfectly honest. Uh, Urgot gets picked on five. Uh, here, I think most of the time, you know, in my mind here, with Kalista, Rel, Nico, I think that you should just play Rumble. Like you ban Udir, it looks like you're setting up Rumble, you're picking Urgot instead. I can't judge Urgot's power, like Urgot, Black Cleaver, Urgot fucking buying Hole Breaker, like these are nice items on him, but I don't know how good Urgot really is, you know, there's not enough footage for me to, to give like an accurate assessment, so you hope going into the game that they know something we don't, right? They get the Urgot reset and he pops off, something like this, but uh, maybe in a different game Urgot would have done a lot better because there was a lot of crucial mistakes here that, G that Casey did. Uh, so looking at the game, let me just fast forward to it because um, everything just finished. So, so in this game, the classics, the classic, we just have KC opening on the map and just uh, finding dives on bottom side. I have to commend Rogue here for playing the situation very good because Zuele stays on the turret, still has bone plating, Comp has no flash, no cleanse from the previous trade. So Zuele stays under the turret and he gets level 2 and he has aftershock and bone plating. The fact that Senna didn't take XP makes Zuelis reach level 2 a lot faster than he usually would, allowing him to skill W and to have that shield and then to, of course, you know, just have a good time here. The, Zuel, this train of, train of thought was beautiful. They may manage to secure the dive while Viego is getting advantages for himself. I think that Viego potentially could have been greedier. I'm going to take, take a look if he could have been greedier. Another detail here, right, is that Urgot cannot really play his matchup. He bases for Cull, which is very nice. Uh, but Viego is sniffing his ass also. He can't look to pressure because Finn is low HP here. And Finn gets to slow push out after the fact, right? This also delays uh, Morphe's base, so he can get Tabi on first base. Morphe is very happy with a Urgot cheater recalling because Viego is uh, scaring his ass off. So Viego crosses into both sides of the river. Uh, bottom lane is still frozen. Viego is uh, playing for himself. Viego is just being very selfish and bot lane is suffering. Zuel is now on the wave that is bouncing. Now there is no reason for them to push it forward because the wave is actually bouncing. Uh, Casey, of course, want to punish on the bouncing wave and hold the freeze and then look to punish these rogue bot laners with no smite. Uh, not, not smite, sorry, no flashes. They manage to accomplish it. They get the kill, which is very nice. But Viego is getting advantages. He's focusing on himself. While, of course, Casey is trying to dive bot. But the same line of logic again. Zuel is under the turret, can't get Dove, too tanky, Senna pieces out. Very nice here, I like it. Zuel is staying alive. Key detail here though is Comp is not getting any souls, right? So it's not like it's completely pointless. Senna's out of range for souls, she's piecing out. And uh, they manage to defend bot over and over again. Uh, very crucial moment in the game is the next Void Grubs that spawn. So we're gonna fast forward until that happens. Uh, they try to set up bottom dives over and over again uh, with, uh, of course, um, uh, the prior of Nico. They managed to kill as well as in this one. At least he died in this one, so they kill him and they get out of the turret range because Zenza was tanking. This is super nice. Targamas gets Kalista ulted. They managed to get the kill and Ari has no punish. They are very, very happy to be in this position. Good job from KC. Good clean dive. They managed to get, kill Zuelis and call him out on this fucking you know, bullshit he's been pulling against the dives, which is, you know, well played by Rogue. So far, a decent game, but here, this is the crucial moment. This is a crucial moment because every Senna game leads to this moment where the enemy, Nautilus, is going to have armor, Bami. What does this mean? Very hard to dive him on the cross map. Senna commits then into topside to punish this Kalista that is matching the Nautilus in the bottom side. And the key detail here is that Targamas needs to follow into topside and they need to invite a, a 4v4. Targamas is instead going into bottom side and they are pressuring to... like they are, When you go into bottom side here with Rel, you are committing to the idea of banning, like diving this Nautilus. And that's the whole problem of this sequence. Here, Urgot has vision. They are not aware of the Senna swap coming. Senna is just clearing camps together with her jungler to get souls. Senna now, 25 souls, they look for the gang. Cabo is now slow pushing out. Easily, easily, Bo and Targamas could have matched here. They could have fought here. This could have been an engagement if they're aware of the fact that this Senna swoop is coming because of the Void Grub spawn. They tried to do exactly the same thing themselves against G2. If you guys recall, 
Let me just show you the game against G2. G2 versus KC. They are aware of the they are aware of the swap. They they try to do it themselves, right? Look at this one. In this moment, right? Let me just fast forward to the moment in time. I'm fast forwarded too much. Here it is. So here, Targanos is in the bottom side. They try to do the Void Grab swap, but they do it one wave too early because the enemy is pushing and they have the power on Smolder, Rakan and Javan to actually dive Targamas. Because the difference here is Targamas has a new magic mantle, not a Warden's Mail. Uh, in comparison to, of course... Uh, in comparison to, of course, the, the, the other target. Uh, we continue. The fucking dog was howling outside. Uh, we continue. Here they do the they do the exact same swap. Look, it's mirrored. Senna is right now doing red, doing golems. They are going to go into top side. They're going to look to pressure the Gragas, right? They're looking to trade. But the issue is Tagama is not tanky enough to stay under the turret. And he's piecing out, right? Because he doesn't have armor. If he has armor bot, he can't get dove. So it's very important what you itemize and how you spend your gold. Uh, here we see that they realize that they are too fucking early for the void drops and they cross into bottom side because Tagamas can't stay. So they make a defensive maneuver and G2 gets caught off guard. I'm only showing this is because KC is very well aware of the Senna swap strategy because they wanted to deploy it themselves. Uh, here, if you see this moment in time, they cross into the bush, Malphite ults. Uh, very hard for Kabo to play this because if he doesn't have full info and if he just flashes Malphite ult like that, then you know... Uh, you know, it's just bad for the matchup because he's under threat. He has a Warden pick, so he feels safe. But here, as well as Warden's Mail. Warden's Mail, right? Warden's Mail, Bami, and he's unkillable. But KC is in a position now where Urgot got fucked on the top wave and they feel the need to do something. But in all honesty, here, Urgot should just walk into bot and they should cross into mid and match. That would have solved everything. But KC doesn't feel like they should let go. Urgot goes into top side and they want to get those bot side camps. But the issue is this Urgot is not farming and the Nautilus is farming. Very, very big difference of power here. Marcoon as well, he's piecing out, but in all honesty, he should just sit in the bush and not let Kabu cross. I wonder here in this moment if Kabu is just saying, if they go on me, I want you to TP Nico. But the way Nico is playing is not as, as if she's ready. And it's not like Larson can't match. I think Viego should be here to fuck him up because they spot him, right? Viego should hover in this moment and this Kabu should not be allowed to be here. This is very bad. But Casey feels really fucking pressure because the mistake happened from before, but they're not willing to pay the small price. So they're like, we need to fucking dive this guy on bot. But he has a fucking Warden's Mail. Warden's Mail, guys. Here we go, Larson has TP, he's hovering into bottom side, uh, the Senna old lands, which is a very big deal, you see this fucking Kalista is trying to put spears into him, but there's no damage is happening, and then of course the Nautilus ult comes at a very good time, I like that Zoelis hold it, it seems like Zoelis' biggest skill is knowing how to get Dove on Nautilus, uh, and uh, they managed to get the kill, but Larson follows up with a fucking triple kill, this turret did 2000, 3000 damage in this fight, and Larson has a triple kill. And blue side's composition, it's not allowed to fall behind. It just isn't. And the Cabo Shard also gets dove on the top. And they get first turret. And they defend bot. And last is now on at 30 CS, 20 CS. Uh, with three kills. Which is a complete disaster, of course. Complete disaster. Uh, we fast forward. Uh, the next fight here. Saken will flash. The Rift Herald fight. Rogue is committing to it. But here just well is queuing in here. You know. As well as is a specialist as, at, at, at getting Dove on bot, but hooking in like this when your Morphite is out of position like that, this is just psychopath behavior, right? Uh, like your team doesn't want to, to fight like this. You need to take it easy. Uh, there's no rush. Ari is not in position to follow up, and this is just plain and simple not good, right? Uh, he needs to take it easy a little bit and just play with Morphite, because Morphite is taking a journey across the desert right now. So here, Sa can use Flash, which is a crucial detail I want you to remember for the next one. So KC managed to, to, to take the fight, take the Herald, good job, but it means that they don't have Flash of Nico for the upcoming fight, which is of course very crucial. Here, Cabo manages to find the gold, gold to secure Black Cleaver, so we know this next coming Drake fight is going to be the deciding factor here, because Blue Side's composition cannot slow down, Armor is too cost-efficient against them, Ninja Tabi counters them hard, they have Ergo, Zinzao, Kalista, 
Armor is very, very tough against them. Malphite on 5 is a neck breaker. Malphite on 5 fucks their whole comp, right? And he's in really good conditions. Could Urgot go fucked on the Senna swap? In this moment, right? You cross into bottom side. We see this Drake situation. Uh, the reason I mentioned they cross into bottom side because they lost mid turret in this whole situation. I don't like the fact that they are setting up on, on bot. Like, uh, I think they should just play around mid. I don't know what this... Uh, Lane assignment is uh, enemy team has six void grubs, so they can easily knock the mid turret down. I really don't get this lane assignment. Yeah, of going, for, for going for on bottom side. This is like some hundred thieves macro from from Bjergsen WF days, you know. I think they can just cross through mid and play the game, but and I think Nico should be the one going on the flank. But nevertheless, let's take a look at this fight. Nico no flash, crucial detail. I think here the moment Zoelis overcommits and they kill him, I think they needed to play a little bit slower and easier. Cabo tries to extend the fight by flashing as the meat grinder is cooking to get a big fear going, but he doesn't hit the right targets. The same thing for Saken, he tries to find an angle, but doesn't get it. Imagine here in this spot if Casey just take it easy. They've already won the fight, but they try to push forward. But here, if you look at Comp and Larsen's position, no threat. Nick ult was just used, Ergot ult was just used. And Targamas spells were also just used. So we continue. Targamas finds the Illidan engage, but this also means that Markun gets a reset. They continue. And now, to be fair, to be honest, the game is plain and simple over. Uh, the enemy team is just too far ahead. Larsen is just too strong. And um, Blue Side's composition just completely falls off. Uh, there is, there's just no going back. There is no going back. There's simply no going back. Casey managed to secure one Drake at least. But uh, the enemy Ari is taking the whole base, so it doesn't really matter. The game is just over. This was a very important game for Casey. Yeah. I don't know what to say, guys. It's, um, it's a bit painful to watch. I think that this uh, draft leaves them with... Uh, very little options and uh, I think the Senna swap and the dive like that two minute sequence was just one of the worst sequences ever uh, very painful to watch uh, I hope uh, that they can bounce back Mad Lions is not showing a hot performance this is very winnable SK as well very winnable SK has thrown some heavy games mad games they just need to fucking keep their head in the game man just fucking move on and take whatever they can and just fucking move on bounce back quick you know they can't fall, fall into this thought process that this is going to be the same as the previous split. They just can't. They can't let that uh, feeling of doom uh, take over because they need to maintain a feeling of opportunity and a feeling of control of their own destiny because you need to come at this with positive initiative. And I hope that the Casey boys uh, remain strong. You know... I repeat this over and over again, like the main, main pain point is like Casey is completely fine, I'm fine with whatever decision they want to make, right? Uh, they have every right to bench me, that's cool, uh, I, I appreciate that, it's all good, you know, I, I really don't care on that front. Uh, I care about the players, I care about the coaches, it just feels like shit to, to leave them, you know? It just feels like shit to leave them. Because uh, it's like you make a commitment to the year and I told them that I want to be with them until the end and... Uh, that's the part that sings the most, you know, so I'm just sitting here fucking getting angry in my own fucking PC chair. Uh, I just wish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll catch you guys on the next one.